guys, we are doing a different style of video today. We're gonna do a little get ready with me, which I never do using um, like TikTok viral, um, like makeup base application technique that I learned. On top of that, we're gonna be talking about Love is Blind. I took notes on the reunion, some like little tidbits so I can remember myself because it was long. It was so good and we'll just chit chat about it and I'll give you my take. Coming from someone who dated a manipulator, I have some interesting points to point out. Here we go. All right, so this is the setup right now. I'm just gonna use a little bit of face moisturizer. I'm just using the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream, just cause my skin is so dry. And then I'm also gonna use a little sunscreen cause you gotta protect your face. Not a little, a lot. I'm using the Coco Kine. It just has all really great ingredients. So that's why I use it because everything that they come out with is like non-toxic and oops, I just lost a ton. Yeah, everything that they come out with is non-toxic. It's better for your skin fragrance free, so on and so forth. So we're gonna rub that in. The first thing that I wanna point out is the fact that the men and women looked so great in the finale. Um, Danielle and Nick looked great matching in blue, and then Ayana and Jarrett looked great matching in red. I adore Natalie, she's such a gem. I also really, really, really obviously love Deep D. I think she's great like just a beautiful person inside and out. Obviously you can't tell everything based on a reality TV show, but um, I just love everything about her. And I think she's like the rep representation that this show needed because it's so hard coming from a background of someone who's Middle Eastern, you don't really get the representat representation that you would look for in TV shows. So it's nice to see, it's nice to see some ranges of color, which is really, really nice. And of course, we can't forget about Mal, Mal Mal, who looked great with her hair being all straightened. I love her curls, they're always so stunning. She like pulls them off so well. Her natural hair is just so beautiful. Um, but it was nice to see a little straightened hair just to see what it looks like, and she's beautiful. So first thing is the fact that Shake in interrupted like right off the bat, right? So we started to learn a little bit about Shake and his mannerisms pretty early on in the show. His demeanor comes across as very, um, very much look driven and um, not really about what the show is about, which is love is blind, meaning you pay more attention to things on the inside than what a girl might look like. I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury right on the high points of my face. I'm gonna go in with another foundation after. This is not an actual foundation. This is just, I mean, I guess you can use it as a foundation, but um, you are primarily using this under your makeup. Shake off the bat, he was pretty defensive. He talked about, and I've been actually looking at his social media for a few days. He's been talking a lot about how the producers edited the show to make him look bad. I don't doubt that what he said wasn't great, but it is reality TV. So it's one of those things where like, we don't know what's happening behind the cameras. We don't know what's happening behind the scenes. All we did know is the fact that like, they showed what he had said, Deep D, clearly in this reunion went from being very much like, oh, I, you know, I love Shake, like I love him as a person, whatever, to pretty much despising him. She didn't give him the chance to talk. Like she just didn't really want to hear what he had to say. And every time he tried to speak up, everyone was like, uh -huh. And can we also talk about the fact that Shayna's face always was like this? I don't know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what that was. I'm using the Rare Beauty Foundation. It's, I think it's the, it's the more like radiant liquid foundation. And I'm just gonna use that everywhere except for the high points of my face. Pretty much a quarter of the way into it, they started talking about how Shayna went up to Shane right after she got proposed to and confessed her feelings to Shane. Now, of course, we saw that, but that's not something that Natalie per se knew. Apparently there was a conversation where she called Natalie and she, she pretty much she downplayed the whole conversation, which is not the greatest, but I guess in that situation, um, her nerves probably got the best of her. Maybe I'm giving the benefit of the doubt, but maybe her nerves got the best of her and she's like, 
I can't believe I did that kind of thing. We see that Natalie is very forgiving and just so well-spoken. She addresses everything very coy and she doesn't exactly go into details about anything at all throughout the whole reunion. One of the examples is that at the very end when um, they were supposed to get married, they meaning Natalie and Shane, instead of getting married, they got into a fight. So that kind of ended the marriage or the possible marriage. And she did not talk about what had caused the fight. They asked her what it was about and she didn't answer. Next, I'm just taking the Rare Beauty um, concealer and I'm just gonna put that a little right there, a little right there, a little in the corner right there, a little right there. And I actually like how much coverage this has, so I put it right on my scar on my nose. So Shayna had mentioned, I'm gonna actually let this sit for a second. Shayna had mentioned how she wasn't actually flipping back and forth, like using Kyle as a backup. Obviously, I don't know her personally. I can't speak to that. But Kyle even said that she did. And it just from the way that it was edited, I'm going to keep on using the way that it was edited because I don't want to judge off of um, solely being like, she definitely did or she definitely did not because editing can obviously misconstrue things. It looked like it. It definitely looked that like Kyle was the backup because if he wasn't the backup, then she wouldn't have gone to Shane after being proposed to, to try to like clear the air or keep the door open or tell her truth or tell her feelings. That wouldn't be an issue or that wouldn't be a thing if Kyle was the actual priority in her life. So while they were talking about this, Shake decided to give some input and everyone huffed per usual. I, I thought that was the most bizarre thing. Literally no one wanted to hear him talk. I'm gonna just keep my mirror with me so I can actually look. So one of the things he mentioned when he was talking about Shane, Shayna and Kyle, he decided to give his two cents and said that maybe other people thought that way that he did. And everyone's like, no, you're the only one. You're the 1%, like not even, whatever. And what he was referring to was the fact that the drive to continue on the show might have been one of the forces keeping Shayna and Kyle still going, which this is the one thing that I, I might agree. Like I said, don't know Kyle, don't know Shayna. Just the way that it perceived by all means, I don't love Shake or don't love the personality that was portrayed on TV. However, I will say that it is a possibility that the drive to be on the show is what kept them together because if they weren't together, they wouldn't have gotten more airtime on the show. And does that mean they were trying to build their social media careers? Like, I don't know, who knows? Or maybe they just thought it would be really cool to be on TV for longer. Like, that could have been a case. We don't know for sure, we can't judge it for sure, but we can't also rule that out. It's a possibility. Apparently there were two other couples that were not aired on TV or aired on Netflix that also did get engaged, but we didn't get to see their weddings because apparently producers said that they don't have the funds to be able to show all of the couples getting married. So they have to pick and choose who the group that they think would do best. So. Not gonna lie, Sheena and Kyle, they're very like, I mean, Sheena's a very interesting character. She definitely brought this like new uh, outlook on the show or different, different perception on the show, um, added a little bit of drama to the show. So thinking from a producer's perspective, she would be great to keep on because it would get people talking about how awful she was or like, how rude it was for her to reach out to Shane or like the dynamic between them or it would just get the show going more. And if they included these other two couples, maybe they wouldn't have done so well. Like this season wouldn't have done so well. Who knows? So I'm not gonna rule that out and that's gonna be the one and only time that I will probably ever not necessarily disagree with about Shane. By the way, I just took this Mario uh, Makeup by Mario. It's just a contour stick in the shade medium and I just use it in a few little spots on my face. And I'm just gonna take my, um, it's just a, a more dense blending brush, and I'm just gonna tap that in instead of moving that around. 
I also, if you notice, I put it pretty high up on my face because it gives a more like lifting effect. So that's what I'm doing. So for now, we're done with Shane and Shayna and Natalie, and we're moving on over to Ayana and Jerber. So there was one of the things that Jarrett said that they zoomed in on his face and Ayana's face was in the background and it wasn't totally blurry or anything, but you could see her reaction to things. So when he was talking about how he didn't want Ayana to feel like a runner up, her face looked so perception here, so don't get mad, but it looked so disconnected. Like she, and she didn't look engaged in it and it was almost like that brought back some feelings that she might not have worked through per se, which she was very honest about it. She said like, in w one part she mentioned how she thought she was over and she's like, I thought I was good, I thought it was good. But um, some, it's sometimes scars need time and some open wounds need time to heal. And that's just the reality of it. At this point, they started to talk about Jer and Mallory. And I knew this was coming up. I knew that they were gonna end up talking about the talk that they had in Mexico because it was very inappropriate. Pretty much that's exactly what they were saying. They were saying that it's just really inappropriate for the conversation that they had. And they were kind of going back and forth and everyone was trying to give their two cents. Jer, Jarrett gave um, or gave ownership to the fact that it was inappropriate. Sal definitely gave us two cents, which it broke my heart because Sal, they're all seem like such nice people, but Sal seems like such a gem that it's like, how could anyone hurt this poor kid? He was like singing to her, like so infatuated by her. They were talking about it and Sal was kind of calling, calling Jared out on it, but saying that he didn't want to like air this out and that it was squashed, which is one of the most, it's so nice. Natalie's like that and Sal's like that. They don't want to air out the dirty laundry. Like they'd rather just keep things pretty private and just keep it at that. And I love that because I'm kind of that kind of person too. Like I, as you guys know, I don't talk about things very openly on social media. Um, I give you guys insight to so much of my life, but I try to keep some things private because the, it's just, there's some things that the world just doesn't need to know. I forgot to mention this. I'm just so bad at this. <laughs> Rare beauty. What color is this? Joy. I just used a few little dots. Um, I love it and I put it a little bit on my nose always. This is a newer product that I fell in love with. It's the NYX Thick It Stick It. Um, I'm just gonna run this through my brows. It makes them look a little bushier, a little more full, and you'll see the difference. So one of the things that I wanted to also bring note to is the fact that Sal didn't really talk about what happened with him and Mal, um, but there's one thing that he said, and he said, call it karma or whatever. It got me thinking, and I don't, That's it got me thinking, but I don't, know what to think at the same time. I don't know if something happened where, because everything happened with Mallory in the beginning, then Sal's ex-girlfriend came back into the picture and that's why he's calling it like, I don't like, I don't know, that, that wouldn't even be karma. So like, I don't know, or maybe what, I don't know. It's such a weird situation. I wanna hear what your guys' thoughts on that were, was to sound off if you've watched the show, sound off in the comments what you think he meant by karma. Also, look at the difference. I'm not even done yet. Just makes it look so thick. I freaking love this product. It's when Sal was talking about Mallory and Jarrett, um, Ayana kept saying like, it's inappropriate, but like you couldn't really hear, hear her say it. She was more like mouthing it or saying it very slowly. You could tell or maybe assume that she just, she still wants Jarrett, which he already had, to bring ownership to that. Because technically Mexico, this is one thing that you have to realize, Mexico was their honeymoon. Like that wasn't just like a trip where you all get to meet each other. That was their honeymoon. So to have that kind of conversation is just very inappropriate. And like, of course it had to happen because it was the first time they met and like, you just want to clear the air and squash some things, but the extent to where it went, not great. Oh, I forgot the best part. So at the end, they, Shane got very closed off and he was very much being defensive. 
I noticed in the show, of course, there's some gaslighting that happens and that's not a great characteristic to have there, my guy. You could tell that he kept like sighing or huffing or putting his head down the second that they started talking about Shana. And they asked if Shana and him had seen each other. And so instead of lying, he was being honest, but at the same time, he was being weird about it. So that made Shana be like, why are you acting like that? I don't know what to think about that. I think it's sketchy. I think it's weird. Something just doesn't add up between them. And I really just don't know what it is. So this is the major trick that I learned on Z TikTok. And what you're gonna do is spray your face with Oh, I'm getting low. With the mist. And I'm just gonna let that sit for a sec. And I'm also gonna just make this wet. I'm gonna have to toss this, I need a new one. It's just Max Fix Plus, and it's a pineapple one, and it's really good. Shake is so inappropriate about talking about Vanessa and how he's attracted to her. And I love how Nick Lachey just came in and was like, you treat animals, you don't treat like, it's just, you, the way he talks about women in general is so degrading and so awful and just so gross that it, there's no excuse about like, oh, it was edited that way in regards to this because he was just very upfront, but it could be a defense mechanism. Like he could feel like he's been being attacked online and not gonna lie, of course, he, so he's a vet and he's starting his own business. And I can't imagine that this looks great for his business, the way that he talks about women. So I can't, I, I don't blame him for wanting to rescue his reputation, but he's kind of just making it worse. So now I dipped this into my, sh what powder is this? I think this is Hourglass Mineral Veil. Yeah, translucent powder. And then I'm just dusting the rest of it off the back of my hand. And then I'm just gonna press and it literally gives, it's gonna be so hard to see right now. Let's see. Let's see if this translates. It blurs in any imperfections you might have. Let's see if you can see it. Look at that. So you can't see any of the pores or skin texture or whatever that you may have going on. Oh, hold on, what's that? I'm not gonna do a full, full face, so I'm just gonna line my lips real quick. I'm just using the Natural Liner by NYX. Little technique to fake a lip flip is following your natural lip through the corners of your mouth. And then when you get to the very top, like the Cupid's bow, you're gonna overline slightly on that and then go straight across and then come back down on this side, but again, following your lip shape. You wanna keep it kind of really, really tight on the corners. And then I'm taking this Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip in the shade Coconut, and I'm just gonna put that on my lips. That's such a pretty color. And it has such a nice sheen to it. I'm also gonna lightly fill in where I have some missing sparse hairs with the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil. I love the Anastasia one, but I ran out and I grabbed this on the fly and it's actually really nice. We're gonna end this with just hitting some notes about the new Netflix show that just got hinted at um, called Ultimatum. I think, I think it's gonna be very interesting to watch. I would never go on that show. If my boyfriend didn't want to get married to me and I was like, let's go on this show where like you either you're given an ultimatum of either marrying me or you date this other person or live with this other person temporarily and see if that makes you want to either marry me or go be with someone else, AKA the married dating life is not for you. I would never do that. I'd be like, okay, if you don't wanna get married, clearly this isn't going somewhere. Like, I don't think I would be like, let's go on the show where you can live with another girl and let me know if you want to marry me after. That just sounds like a recipe for disaster. I'm sure it's gonna work for somebody, but that somebody ain't me, I can tell you that much.
I'm just taking that Charlotte Tilbury and I'm putting it on the highlights of my face. So right there, it just gives this very like wet look. Um, I can just blend that in with my finger. I'll put a little right here. And I'll put a little tiny bit on the cheek under my nose. I don't like to contour my nose super, super tight so that it looks like, I don't like doing that. And then I'll go in with a little bit of the bronzer that I have and I'll just dust that on the outskirts of my face. And I'm just gonna use the Fenty Beauty Island Ting. And I'll just hit the very top right here. And here. All right, I'm gonna take down my hair, show you guys what this looks like, and we'll give final thoughts. So this is the base without any um, eye makeup on. I do have my lash extensions, of course, but I love how it looks. It looks so pretty in person. This is just a very like, I wouldn't call this no makeup makeup look by any means, but it does give you a really flawless base. So if you want to go more crazier on the eyes, by all means, you could totally do it. But um, yeah, those are my final thoughts about Love is Blind season two reunion. It's it was just strange overall. I don't know what to take of it besides I hope the best for all of them. Kyle's little like love admittance of Deep D of wanting to marry her was a little like outright and forthcoming. I don't know where that came from, but I think they're probably dating. There's like speculation that they're dating. Which, good for them, that's incredible, but it was just a weird, weird flex, but okay, kind of thing. Overall, I love Love is Blind. I think it's a great show. Um, I'm really excited for season three, and I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did. Thanks so much for hanging out. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know if you like this type of video, and I will see you guys very soon.